So we have a plank over here and the object is released from rest. Oh, it's gonna bang over here and it's gonna start moving this way. And now the speed at B after the strike if the collision is perfectly inelastic. So this thing is gonna go and bang over here, right? You can pretty much see that. And it's given that the collision is perfectly inelastic. If that is the case, then what's going to be the speed over here? Now, what do we mean by collision is inelastic? Well, let's first try to understand what that means. If you have a wall over here, some sort of a wall like this, and you throw some object right at it and we say the collision is inelastic what does it mean well it means once it collides it's gonna lose all its speed in this direction that means an inelastic collision basically says that the velocity in the direction perpendicular to the wall that is lost gone zero which means once this thing strikes over here there's going to be a velocity perpendicular to this plank and that velocity disappears. And so I have to basically remove that velocity from the block once it reaches B and then I'll be done and I'll be able to have the first, first question. So let's do it, okay? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to calculate the velocity of the block at B before it strikes. Okay, just before it strikes and that's easy right it's frictionless everything is frictionless it's mentioned in the problem I did not say that but it's frictionless stuff and because of that what's going to happen is uh, we can use energy conservation so let's see what's this height going to be well look this is root 3 so I can use tan right tan 60 that's root 3 must be equal to opposite side that's the h value divided by the adjacent side which is root 3 so that gives us h equal to 3 so this guy over here is 3 okay so all i have to do i'm gonna call this is point a and this is point a i just have to say the potential energy at a plus kinetic energy at a should be equal to potential energy at b plus kinetic energy at b this is before the strike so energy is conserved before the strike. So potential energy at A is just mgh. So that's m into g times 3. So this is 3mg because height is 3. Plus kinetic energy is released from rest. Should be equal to potential energy at B. Well, I'm going to call this as 0. Plus half m into v squared. Let me call this as vb. Okay, so m cancels. So vb is going to be 6g or square root of 6g and they have asked us to take g as 10 which i did not mention here but they have given so that's 60 meters per second now six root 60 meters per second was one of the options but remember this is before the strike and the question now is after the strike now we have to be careful now here is the plank or here's the slide that we have and this angle over here is at 30 degrees. But our block, which is over here right now, it's like, you know, it's pouring in air a little bit, has a velocity which is directed this way. Because you see, it was coming in this direction. It's directed this way. So when it comes over here, this way. So I need to calculate what this angle is. So I have to decompose this. Let's see. Well, we know that this angle is 60. So this angle is also going to be 60. This whole angle is going to be 60. Oh, that means we can easily decompose this, right? Right? Ooh, no, 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 no. Let's see. Okay, okay. Let me let me reduce. No, that's not right. So let's see. Here, I'm gonna take this. Take this. This angle is sixty. It's given to us. 
okay so um, this angle from here to here is also going to be 60 oh wait this angle is 30 degrees there it is that's right zigzag Z and this whole angle is 60 degrees it's vertically opposite to this can you guys see that I'm gonna mark it so let's be very clear I call this as X Y Z okay and I have P Y because it's Q and this is um, uh, R okay now notice that P Y and this guy let's just call this as something like S notice that P Y S and X Y Z are vertically opposite angles so this whole angle is 60 degrees and, and if you got this please skip ahead Okay. Anyways, and if you look at this angle, P, Y, Q, that should be the same as this guy because it's alternate interior angle, so it's 30 degrees. Since we know this is 30 and we know the whole angle is 60, this angle must be 30 degrees. Phew. There it is. Okay. Messed up, messed up my drawing. But now, please try to follow me. This guy will be one component. This guy will be the other component. Okay? So th it's this component which is perpendicular to my plank. It's that component that's going to disappear. So, VB perpendicular after the strike. Now I'm talking about after the strike. VB perpendicular is going to be zero. And so the only thing that remains is VB parallel, and VB parallel is the, is the velocity along the plank. And that's going to be VB, which I found over here, times cos 30. Oops. Therefore, the velocity that remains is root 60 into cos 30 is root 3 divided by 2. That is 60 into 3 divided by 4, 4 15 times. And that is a root 45. That's the answer. That's the answer for the first one. Speed at B just after the collision. Okay, next question is speed at C just before the block leaves the incline. That's easy. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Just use energy conservation. We know what the speed at B is. That's root 45. Use energy conservation. You can calculate what this height is. That's like homework for you, okay? So this is like dead easy. No problem. I want to concentrate on this one. Question number three. If collision at B was perfect elastic, that means it goes and bangs over here, it's a perfect elastic collision, find the velocity component, find the vertical component of the velocity at B after the strike. Now think about this. This object is going to go and bang. If it bangs and if it's a perfect elastic collision, it's going to take off somewhere. I don't know exactly how. We're gonna, we have to find that out. It's gonna take off somehow. And once it takes off, it'll have a horizontal and vertical component, and we need to calculate what the vertical component is. That means you basically have to figure out what's going to be the velocity after it takes off. It's again amazing geometry. So let's do it. So here we have. I'm gonna draw big so we'll be able to see what's going on. So here we have a 30 degrees plank. And imagine here is that object which is about to bang now. Before it strikes, it had two velocities which we, fought, which we found out. One was this way, which was VB cos uh, sine that sine. What was that? Let it go. There it is. So before collision, this was the case, and that is VB sine 30. So this was root 60 times sine 30, that's half. And this was root 60 times root 3, which is root 5. This is before collision. Well, after collision, what's going to happen? 
Well, if it's a perfect elastic collision, this thing is just going to flip back because the energy has to be conserved, so the speed should remain the same. So there's no more calculation for speed remaining, we just have to figure out what angle it launches. So, we now know that it's going to be launched off in such a way, this is after collision, such that it's going to get a speed like this, that's root 60 times half, that's root 60 by 4, that's root 15. And we have one component here, that's root 45. And we need to figure out exactly how it travels. So, hmm. How do we do this? I think the best way is going to be re decompose these vectors because you want vertical component, right? So re decompose these vectors along this direction and this direction. <laughs> Maybe I'm taking the long way, but I think this is a pretty good way to solve. Okay, so this is 30, so this is going to be 60, so this is going to be 30. So this is going to be 30. So all we need to calculate now is what is this component of this fellow and this component of this fellow. If this guy is more than this, vertically downwards. If this guy is more than this, vertically upwards. And by chance, if they turn out to be exactly equal, then they're going to cancel out. Let's see. This guy, I'm going to call it as, I don't know what names to give it. I'll call it V1, this is V2. So V1, <laughs> V1, V1 is going to be root 15 multiplied by cos 30. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So that's going to be root 45 divided by 4. And V2 is going to be root 45 into sine 30. That's half. Ooh. <laughs> See, these two cancel out. That means this thing is going to go this way. Therefore, the vertical component is zero. So the answer for this third one, stay tuned for more episodes.